Hey, how's it going, everybody? Finally got a pickups video for you guys. Anyways, uh, the majority of this stuff came from my local Goodwill. I'm going to save the big thing last. That is a vintage system that I just picked up today for dirt cheap. And I'm going to start out with a couple of things that I got from my buddy John at Video Game World. Anyways, I'm not going to say new games for the collection, just better copies. One of them is sealed and one's just in good shape. So, anyways, the one in good shape. Nice copy of Beavis and Butthead for the Super Nintendo. This was $10 in trade and then $2 cash. This game, it's either $20 cash or $20 trade. He just said take it home. Anyways, sealed copy of Burger Time for the Mattel and Television. And for any of my subscribers that I've had for a while, y'all know this is my all-time favorite game. This is the system I grew up with, so I played the shit out of this. So really cool to have a sealed copy to put up on my shelf. So this is stuff from John. Goodwill. I'm going to show you a couple of uh, He-Man action figures that I picked up, including one of them that I already had. So... The one I already have is different from the one I picked up when it comes to the arms. It's like somebody either goofed or they just did it on purpose. So, show you this guy first. I have no idea what his name is. None of them have their armor or weapons. It's a closed fisted masturbator. Anyways, all on these are from uh, 1983. Not in bad shape. It's a little bit of spots on his eyebrows and hair and boots and whatnot where the paint's coming off. Otherwise, not in bad shape. Worth about five bucks tops. They're not some of the more expensive ones on He Man. Okay, I'll show you the one that I already had first. I got this back when I found a box full of vintage and newish Ninja Turtles. There's some He Man stuff mixed in. Anyways, uh, this guy is Jitsu. Also worth about five bucks. This guy to me, everything matches up. The arms match up. They're a little tiny bit lighter, but it's a different type of plastic. So it's just the tones. Is uh, the rest of his body is more of a glossy finish? As I'd say, he pretty much looks normal on everything. It's a new guy that I picked up. See the difference? And it's more to the naked eye. My cam's kind of wanting to make them look a little darker, but uh, if you notice, yeah, they both got their thumb up, and it's pretty much the same arm, just different colored plastic. But it's pretty obvious that somebody screwed up at the factory and put the wrong arms on them or maybe they ran out of them and just figured screw it these are fit and put them on instead i don't know but uh for any of you collectors of he-man stuff let me know if he's worth more or not because i really don't know if that's significant or not on the arms otherwise i say man they're all worth about five bucks a piece so anyways got those guys and then same day <laughs> This is just pure friggin' luck. So, yeah, I've got multiple Laserdisc players, but only one of them had the remote with it, and that's my oddball. As the majority of them are all Pioneer Laserdisc players. Anyways, I found a Pioneer Laserdisc remote in really good shape. So I'm going to give you guys which uh, player this was originally for. It is the CU slash CLD084. And it's a uh, two-side player where the uh, laser is on a spindle that rotates, so it plays both sides of the disc without having to flip it over. So, <laughs> out of all the players that I have, that's my best one is my two-sided player. This happens to work with it. And on that, I think mine's like a CLD 502 or something. I'd have to get it out and look it up, but... uh. 
I did plug it in and test this out with it. It works on powering it up and opening up the tray. I just haven't tried playing a movie yet, but I figure everything's going to work. As I looked this up online and found one of those websites where you can order older remotes, where it's just old factory leftovers or whatever. It was like 25 bucks, which if you guys are looking for one of these, that's pricey. Your best bet is to check eBay or maybe even Amazon and see if you can find a used one for cheap. But uh, the site that I found, I'll try and find it again and put it into the description of this video because it lists out all the different players that this is compatible with. And mine just happened to be in the list. So kick ass. Anyway, it's got this and the two action figures for 75 cents. <laughs> Say, man, so far seems to go for about 20 bucks and up online, unless you can find it cheaper on eBay. Next time I went, found some games. This one's going to my buddy John, probably towards paying off burger time. Uh, I know he can make it like new again with this, this resurfacing thing. And I could care less about this game. Got Guitar Hero 3, Legends of Rock for PlayStation 2. It's just missing the book. Otherwise, the disc, a little scratched up, but I'm sure it would boot up. But knowing him, he'll probably just make it like new. So anyways, that was a dollar. It's all games at my... Uh, particular store or a dollar which is one of the things that's nice about the cheaper type goodwills where it's all crap you just go through on the bins they do have some stuff priced out like books and whatnot are dirt cheap like 25 and 50 cents anyways these were sealed up man mint so all i did was just take off the seals to check them out and uh Another question for you guys, this has to do with emulators. Are there any emulators out there that are good, that are for like Windows 3.1 or 95 or 98? Is both of my regular PCs, as I'm on my Apple now doing the vid, but uh, they're both Windows 10, and I'd rather have 95 on them. <laughs> I fucking hate Windows 10. It's an abomination, but... Right now, unless it happens to work on my Dell that I'm using for my uh, MAME system, I don't think I have anything to play these on. So, if you guys know of an emulator for Windows 95 or whatever, let me know. Because I'm dying to play them. Anyway, it's got Monty Python's Complete Waste of Time. And this, I think I've played a demo of it for like the Commodore 64 or something. I don't know. I'll have to check. So it seems to be a bunch of mini games. This one is based on the movie. This is Monty Python and the Quest for the Holy Grail. And I was watching somebody play it here on YouTube, and it does have cutscenes out of the movie. I just don't know if it's actual video clips or if it's just those slideshow type ones. But cool enough. Looks fun. So, anyways, $3 for that day. Now for the big hit, and what's crazy, this is from 77, so any of you retro collectors probably know what I'm talking about. But what's cool is uh, had everything but the power supply, and I think all the parts that were with this are original to the system. Anyways, I haven't cleaned this, but I have a feeling it's going to clean up really nice. There are no gouges in it or anything. Just a few little marks on the uh, pinstriping that goes around the controls, which I always find that. Anyways, three bucks. Got myself another Sears Video Arcade Heavy Sixer from 77 and made by good old Sunny Dale, California. original cord and right off the bat this cord is skinnier than the other Atari's and that's something I'm going to point out on the controllers. So I got paddles and joysticks and one of the joysticks and the paddles have a skinnier cord. Anyways. Original Sears paddles. Like I said, uh, pretty skinny cords. 
and the uh, pins at the end of the plug look a little bit more primitive than the later ones that were for like the four switchers and whatnot. So hopefully those work because I don't think I have any paddles that are for a Sears system. I think they're all Atari or Atari brand or whatever. Is it still Atari? It's just got Sears name on it. So if you open it up, it says Atari on all the circuit boards. Anyways, uh, just out of curiosity, because I've never had an Atari joystick or Sears joystick that has a cord that's skinnier. And it's got the same plug-in as the paddle, so I'm pretty sure this is original to the system. Anyways, this one, when I opened it up, it's, it just says Atari on the circuit board, typical green Atari circuit board, and then Revision 5. And it's one of them where it's got the springs in it, built better than the later ones where they're just little plastic feet that touch the uh, metal tabs. And looks like it's going to clean up really nice. Say that really thin cord. And this one. Built the same way, but the cord is thicker, like they used one off of a later system or something. Or maybe the only other thing I can think of is there's no markings on these joysticks for like signifying what player is what. So maybe they did it to where like the skinny corded one would be player one and the thick corded one would be player two. So you can differ, <laughs> differ, hibbit a bit, hibbit, diff, differentiate, masturbate. So you can masturbate between the two of them, whatever. Anyways, <laughs> so you can tell the fucking difference. <laughs> ah. Can't can't say uh, the brain is full of dead hippies now. No, it's uh, pollen from that big thing that's growing in my front yard that I, I just call it hate. And then I've got despair and misery growing on the other end. So I'm surrounded by pollen. And we've had the wind blowing, so it's all over in the air, man. You get in the right amount of light, you can see the little yellow pollen buds flying around. It's nasty. But, uh, same thing. Spring-loaded. But when I opened up this one, it's just got a brown circuit board in there, and there's nothing on it. Totally blank. So, obviously, for a 77 system, but maybe that, they had to buy an extra joystick. But on the aging, I mean, they both look the same. It just looks like it had been sitting in somebody's garage forever. Anyways, uh, I haven't tested anything. I've only been home for a couple hours. And first thing i got to do is open up everything and clean the hell out of it. I mean, this... It definitely sat in somebody's garage for a long time, like on a shelf. It's got dust and dirt all over it. Every little crack and crevice has dirt in it. But as you can see there, all the wood grain, all that looks perfect. There's no marks. And you can just see a few little spots where some of that silver paint has come off on the chrome there. No loss. I think what I'll do is uh, once I get it all cleaned up and test it, I'll do another short video to show it to you guys all restored. As I'm going to clean everything, including the switches, just everything I can get at. And then I'll show it in another video. Just to do like before, after. And if it doesn't work, I'll do shitty and then something's fucky. So anyways, that is the end of my pickups. And uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep hitting up that Goodwill, man. It was crazy today. There was tons of people in there. And I think the only reason they weren't jumping on that is because it's so filthy dirty. They figured it just wouldn't break. A lot of people, if they see dirt on something, they automatically think it's broken. Which to me, man, I've had some worse than that. In fact, uh... Yeah, the one that I paid three bucks for where it was just a little four switcher that I got at one of the swap meets. That was totally caked in dirt. Cleaned it up, and it's one of my nicest looking systems. So you never know, man. Catch you all later.